Good morning. Welcome here to, uh, yeah, very sunny Chini Manor as we draw together for morning worship. Uh, I'm sorry, it's uh, a little bit late today. Um, uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, I hope you're well. I hope this finds you in uh, good spirits and in fine health. Today, um, we remember, actually two people we remember today, uh, two kind of, well, actually three, three, um, Augustine, Calvin and Philip Neri. Um, yesterday it was St. Aldine, and it was a choice of two, isn't it? Bede and St. Aldine, so Bede, quite a big character as well. Today we remember these three. Um, let's go for Augustine. Let's go for Augustine, because again, it's not quite so local, but it's perhaps slightly more local than John Calvin and possibly Philip Neri. So Augustine's date and of birth and origins are unknown. What is known is that he was a prior of the Monastery of St Andrew at Rome in 596 when he was instructed by Pope Gregory the Great to lead a group of 40 monks to England to preach to the, he to preach to the heathen English. Bede recounted the story of Gregory being intrigued by the sight of fair-haired boys in the slave market of Rome in conceiving the idea of mission to their homeland. Though Augustine famously turned back to Rome while the mission party was passed through Gaul, this was not so much a cold feet on his part as a desire by the highly conscientious Augustine to inform the Pope of the mission's party's corporate reticence and to seek his advice. Returning with a papal letter of encouragement, Augustine led the monks on to England landing at Thanet in Kent in 597. After some initial wariness, Augustine was well received by King Ethelbert of Kent, whose wife Bertha had been brought up in the Christian faith and, indeed, had a Frankish bishop, Leudhard, as her chaplain, though neither, it seems, had used their influence in any form of mission. Augustine was allowed to use the old Roman church of St Martin in Canterbury as his base, and here, he and his companions established the daily rhythm of, Bene of the Benedictine rule, whether it was the personal influence of the new arrivals or because of their presence had emboldened the queen and her chaplain is not known. But very soon afterwards, King Ethelbert asked to be instructed in the faith and prepared for baptism. The king's conversion naturally gave a great impetus to the spread of Christianity and though Bede was careful to state that compulsion was not used, there can have been few in Kent who could not have seen that Christianity was the faith of the future. An indication of this was that on Christmas Day 597, Augustine is said to have been baptised more than 10,000 people near the mouth of the Medway. Shortly afterwards, he crossed over to Gaul and was consecrated bishop by Virgilius, the metropolitan, uh, the metropolitan of Arles. Ethelbert sponsored a meeting with the existing Celtic bishops in the west of Britain. The conference took place at Malmesbury in 603, but Augustine, was badly, but Augustine badly mishandled it, appearing imperious and arrogant. It took, near, it took another 60 years before an accommodation was reached at the Synod of Whitby, Nevertheless, Augustine is revered by Anglicans as the first of a line of one, over 100 archbishops whose enthronement takes place in St Augustine's chair in Canterbury, in Canterbury Cathedral. From his day to the present, there have been an unbroken succession of the archbishops of Canterbury. So there was indeed a slight local, um, very low, again, Malmesbury comes in, another local uh, local relevance, I suppose you might say. So the arrogance and appearing imperious and arrogant, it failed. There's a rule that we could all live by, isn't it? So welcome this morning. Hopefully you have the uh, order of service in front of you. Oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and clothe us with power from on high. Alleluia. 
Blessed are you, creator God. To you be praise and glory forever. As your spirit moves over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation, pour out your spirit on us today, that we may walk as children of light, and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that was in it, that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities? Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion? So that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all, bless the Lord, all you works of his, in, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Today's psalm, if you scroll down a little bit, is Psalm 99. Psalm 99. The Lord is King. Let the peoples tremble. He is enthroned above the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion and high above all peoples. Let them praise your holy name, which is great and awesome. The Lord our God is holy. Let them praise your name, which is great and awesome. The Lord our God is holy. Mighty King who loves justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. Bow down before his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the law that he gave them. You answered them, O Lord our God. You were a God who forgave them and pardoned them for their offences. Exalt the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. Lord God, mighty King, you love justice and establish equity. May we love justice more than gain and mercy more than power. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Again, we come to um, the song of Ezekiel. It starts with this refrain. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Alleluia. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness. A new heart I will give you and put a new spirit within you. I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. You shall be my people and I will be your God. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Alleluia. We now come to Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 8, beginning to read at the first verse. Luke chapter 8, verse 1. Soon afterwards, Jesus went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, as well as some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Herod, Herod Stuart Tudor, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. When a great crowd gathered, and the people from town after town came to him, he said in a parable, A sower went out to sow his seed, and he sowed, as, as he sowed, some fell on the path, and was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some of it fell on rock, and as it grew up, it withered for lack of moisture. Some of it fell among thorns, and the thorns grew and with it, grew with it and choked it. Some fell into good soil, and when it grew, it produced a hundredfold. As he said this, he called out, "Let anyone with ears to hear listen." Then his disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said to them. To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but to others I speak in parables, so that looking they may not perceive, and listening they may not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The ones on the path are those who have heard, then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. The ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But when they have no roots, they believe only for a while and in a time of testing, fall away. As for what fell among the thorns, these are the ones who hear. But as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life and their fruit does not mature. But as for that in the good soil. These are the ones who, when they hear the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patient endurance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray that we may be rich in soil, good soil around us, and bear that fruit hundredfold or the crop a hundredfold, which Jesus speaks of. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people Renew the face of your creation, Lord, pouring on us the gifts of your spirit and kindle in us the fire of your love. For the creation waits with eager longing for the glorious liberty of the children of God. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. We now come to the Benedictus. I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, 
free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Alleluia. We come to a time of prayer. So let us pray. Just in a moment of quiet, you might like to lift before God all those who are on your hearts, all those who are special to you, those whom you love and maybe see, or whom those whom you love but are distanced from at the moment, or those who you love who are going through difficult times, and maybe those you love but see no longer. In peace, let us pray to Jesus, our Lord, whoever lives to make intercession for us. Saviour of the world, be present in all places of suffering, violence, anxiety and pain. And bring hope even in the darkest night. Inspire us as we follow your will, as we do your work to continue your mission of reconciliation today. Reconciliation with one another and reconciliation with you. We pray for peace in our world, Lord. In all corners of our world, we pray that your presence may be felt. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, by your church, Lord of the Church, empowered by your Spirit, all Christian people, we especially pray for Bishop Viv and for Bishop Lee, and for all who do your work. And we pray for the work of your church in every land, especially amongst our churches, that we may do your work, filled with your Spirit, to follow your will in our lives. Give us grace to proclaim the gospel joyfully in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd and guardian of our souls, guide and enable all who lead and serve our country and community. We give you thanks for those and we pray for those on whom we depend for all our daily needs and grant that we may seek the peace, well-being and welfare of this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great Physician, spread out your hand to bring comfort, wholeness, peace, and healing to all who suffer in body, mind or spirit. And again, just for a moment of quiet, please do lift before God those whom are on your hearts and on your minds at this time. Fill us with compassion that we may be channels of your healing love. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Conqueror of death, remember for good those whom we love but see no longer. Help us to live this day in the sure and certain hope of your eternal victory. And for all those are mourning this day, Lord, we pray that they will know that hope, they will know that peace, and they will know of that promise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of our loving God. Collect for today. Almighty God, whose servant Augustine was sent to, as an apostle, apostle to, of the English people, grant that as he laboured in the spirit to preach Christ's gospel in this land, so all who hear the good news may strive to make your truth known in the world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Being made one, being made one by the power of the Spirit, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May the spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Again, thank you for joining me this morning. Uh, I hope you have a good day. I hope you had a good day yesterday, being bank holiday. I uh, hope you managed to get out into the sunshine. Uh, I hope you get a chance to enjoy this day today. I hope it is a day free from fear and anxiety, worry and illness. And I hope you stay safe and stay well this day and uh, until we meet again. So may the Lord be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Help us to be a blessing to each other and our communities that your ways may be known among us. Let all the people praise you, O Lord. Let all the people praise you. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Have a great day. I'm going to go and sort my hair out. And, uh, and I hope you get a chance to enjoy today. God bless. <laughs>